All right, this is probably going to be my last hardware video for a while. I have mostly installed the Boost Control uh, solenoid transistor. It is this guy right here. Uh, it is a what is it? It's an IRLZ44 uh, field effect transistor. Uh, I got this kit from uh, DIY Auto Tune as the rest of the kit. Uh, basically, I've wired it up as per the MS Extra instructions. Uh, a couple little tricky things I wanted to go over. It's not quite as well documented as the others. I think by the time you get here, it's sort of assumed you know what you're doing, which for me is not really the case, so it took a little while. Uh, so, looking at the schematic, basically, the drain is... Uh, going to be the output basically. Uh, it shows in the MS Extra manual that there's an actual flyback uh, diode on there. Uh, so I put one on there although the kit doesn't come with one. Uh, I did look up this transistor and it turns out it does have a built-in uh, flyback diode so probably that's why it's not included in the kit but I don't think it should hurt to have an extra one in there. Uh, it goes over to 12 volts uh, with the flat side pointed towards the 12 volt uh, and the arrow kind of pointed towards the 12 volt side. Uh, S12 over here has 12 volts on it. We put the same flyback diode in for uh, for the uh, idle air control transistor earlier. So uh, his output here is kind of tricky also. goes over to spare 3. Bottom of the board. Um, you can see this. The spare pins do connect up to the DB37 uh, pins, so it's something I'm kind of still trying to get a handle on uh, is that we've only really got four kind of configurable pins here. It seems like most of the rest are used for grounding or something else um, already, well, usually more essential than these what I would consider options like boost control and uh, inputs for launch control and stuff like that. So. I think what I've found is that uh, I'm going to probably end up mounting a uh, an additional, probably a DB9 onto this uh, board down here, uh, maybe on this side by the uh, where the uh, map sensor uh, vacuum line comes in. So I'm going to do that all later because I really want to get the car running. So I'll maybe do videos of that when I get around to it but all that other stuff I consider kind of options it's not real essential so uh, that's about it this uh, is the gate resistor here and it comes over I found the pin I need to tie to down here is uh, is JS2 uh, it's uh, somewhere around here JS2 down here uh, it's one of the uh, stepper outputs but I'm gonna use it for boost control output and I need to get that to the other side of the board obviously you can't go on this top edge up here or this bottom edge down here because that's where it slides into the extrusion so you can come all the way around but I decided that there's a nice area on this proto board here uh, you can see it right there uh, that goes right through and it's kinda almost unusable down here I hope, hope I don't need the space but I'm gonna jump through the board right there come up and over through my gate resistor that's inside this heat shrink here and then that's going to power it so um, I'm going to use that output on the chip is also normally used for the uh, stepper but I'm not using that I'm using the single wire IAC as I talked about in other videos so uh, let's see then I ground it I ground it over to this big old um, resistor here that is also used for the uh, ignition driver uh, ground so this big heavy ground here uh, so that should be it uh, I wired into spare 3 I'm still trying to figure out or I'm about to find out try to find out can low and can high come out on spare 2 and spare 1 and I'd like to preserve those if they're already wired in although I have no continuity with the can chip and those um, outputs so I'm not really sure if they're already wired in or where you jump room, but I'm trying to save those for now. So that's why I picked spare three. You could probably pick any one of them, but 
I imagine for the other inputs and outputs, the extra stuff, I'll be using uh, a DB9 or something like that to get those cables out of the case uh, and still connectorized. So that's about it for the boost control solenoid. Uh, you run that out, put it between the uh, the turbo and the uh, wastegate, and it basically tricks the wastegate into thinking that the turbo is making less boost than it is. So it opens later, I guess you would say. Um, there's some pretty cool stuff. I'll see if I can get it on the screen here. So basically there's there's some boost control mapping here. This is on MS Extra's website, schematics up uh, here for what I just showed you. Um, you want to fuse between the valve and the, uh, the it, basically between the ground here uh, that you switch. So there's some settings here. Boost control maps. Uh, so this one's throttle position versus RPM. Actually they both are throttle position versus RPM. Um, you give it, I believe this is a duty cycle. Um, you can do target tables, PID, all, all that's defined here. So. Uh, should be a pretty fully functional boost controller um, when it's all done. So hopefully that'll be fun to play with. Uh, not at first though. I'm gonna keep it low boost till I get good at tuning and stuff because I've never done it. So that's about it for boost control.